Well, it's mailbag time. Got a bunch of stuff here. Let's see what we've got. I'll, this is a piece of test gear. I can tell you that much. And it's got some other random bits and pieces, such as eBay things. Stick around. First thing. Oh, those arrived nice and quickly. Excellent. Last week, I had a little bit of an issue with my car. I was driving home after work at night, late, pitch black, live rawly, so there's no lighting or anything like that. It's a storm, so there's lots of heavy rain, that sort of stuff. Visibility is not great. It's just not a nice day. Anyway, I come around this corner on the road and I find there's a herd of calves in the middle of the road. And this is a 100 km hour road. And I'm doing about 70 because of conditions, you know. And I'm used to going around this corner every night, and it's just the way it is. Actually, 70 is quite slow for me in that corner. Because of the weather, the visibility being bad, and like everything being black, basically. Um, yeah, there was cows on the road, and I had to drive my car off the road to avoid hitting them. And I slightly damaged my car. So I had to replace the headlamp, I've already done that. Also, need to replace this little surround which is for the parking sensor in the front bumper. It's got some little sensors in the bumper, one each corner. So if you're getting close to things, it will warn you and beep and right. That's a factory installed one. It broke the sensor because I hit a road marker on the left-hand side of the road because I moved over as far as I could basically right until the edge of a ditch. So I couldn't go over any further to try and miss his cows. Anyway, so what it's got is this little ring here on the front and actually just when it got hit, it pushed the inside part somehow of the actual sensor which then basically sheared off the front ring. The front ring just broke off. Maybe it's UV damage as well, who knows, I don't know, but I had to get a whole new holder. And these are from China. Interesting, I've got these AliExpress, so I've got new holders. So I can go and stick that back on. Now, I couldn't get exactly the right colour. These are a slightly different colour to my car, but they're probably close enough. And um, yeah, I'll just put a new one on. So I've got one which I need now, and one's a spare for future. How's that for story? Watch out for cows, people. Watch out for cows. Ah, oh, okay. I know exactly what that is. Excellent. So this is a keyboard overlay, which will hopefully fit my computer. It probably will, but you never quite know if it's like different spacing on the keys or something like that. This is for using DaVinci Resolve. And it's like an editing keyboard overlay so you can know what shortcuts are for the different functions. You know, trying to learn all these shortcuts on the keys, all the things that the app can do, and you know, trying to use optimized editing. If you don't know what DaVinci Resolve is, it's a editing software for video editing. Now, I've always used Premiere Pro. I recently started to use DaVinci Resolve because I'm just trying to learn it. And I'm having to sort of update my system on my computer as well because I'm using Apple, Mac, and... I don't want to pay the monthly subscription for Premiere Pro. I've upgraded my system by one version because I was having problems with my browser um, being too old now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's it's an old system. I'm using a Mac Pro 2010. I did some videos on upgrading the CPU previously and all that, so I've done some work on it and maxed it out. I've got some SSD and I've got 32 gig of RAM or something like that. I can do a lot more RAM than that, but I found that sufficient. So, I haven't worried about getting any I'm digressing slightly. So I started using DaVinci Resolve. You may see my editing, my videos look a bit different now. I've got like a rolling credits for the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for Patreons, good on you. Um, which you'll see me doing as an overlay now. And I've got some different like transitions and things like that. Just different, just trying to use it. I'm still very, very um, rough on using DaVinci Resolve, but I'm getting there. It's just, it's, you know, it's a slow process learning new software. And that's why I got this, because this is a great thing, because it's got the overlay, the shortcuts on it. So you can just put this over the existing keyboard and then you can just look and go, okay, I know that you know this shortcut does this and this one does that. And you know, I push those keys and or use this key combination with you know that with this button and it does something else. I'm still trying to get used to the shortcuts, obviously, and and this will help a lot with that. I hope so, anyway. If it fits, I'll just went and try putting it over the top of my keyboard, and it fits perfectly. Winner, winner. I'm not going to say chicken dinner because that's not my cash rate. But this one here I already opened up because I thought this might be something else, but it's not. So I pre-opened this one. I just had a little peek inside. I could see what it was. So to show one, it's previously another mailbag. It's one of these mains filters. Here we go. So this is the input side. You've got an earth on that side, 
and um, it's basically got some capacitive inductive filtering inside it to help get noise out of AC lines like common mode noise or stuff like that so I bought this thinking I was going to need it for something a project I was working on well a repair I was working on turns out no I don't it wasn't actually that it was something else so I've done a video on that you'll see it at some point I didn't need this anyway no, I've got a few of these don't do with them but I've got a few of them Like fairly quickly too, it's pretty good. 6S plus, excellent. So this looks exactly like one of the Defender cases by Otterbox. This is a clone, right? It's a fake one. It's not a real one, but there's a difference. The real one is a lot more expensive. <laughs> This one was like 10 bucks, so cheap ass. Is it as good? Probably not. I don't think it is going to be as good, but I need a case and I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I've got an iPhone 6 Plus, which I was given, or sorry, 6S Plus, which I was given. I fixed it up, done some video on that, repaired that phone. All I needed then was a case so I could carry it around with me without damaging it. I've got a Defender case on my phone. I actually got a proper Otterbox Defender case, proper one. We'll see how this one goes. But now, that means I can carry the 6S Plus. Now, the reason I've got a bigger phone, well, the reason I've decided to use this bigger phone is because I watch a lot of videos on it, and the bigger screen would be of great benefit. My normal phone has been a 6S, which my wife bought me for, I think it was my birthday or Christmas, one of those things. I think it was Christmas. Yeah, she got me for Christmas, I think. Several years ago, not after they came out. It's an old phone now, but it still works perfectly fine. I'm really happy with it. I don't actually have a want to change. One of the reasons I don't want to use a newer phone, like the 7 upwards, I don't have a headphone port. I use a headphone port all the time. So, you know, every day I use it. That's why I'm using the 6S Plus. If Apple brought back a headphone jack on a newer phone, then I'll consider updating to a newer one. I do, I think, miss the fact that the camera isn't as good as the new phones. It's good enough for what I do. Anyway, it's a case of my phone, which I've repaired recently, which I've done a video on. Yay. I can now reuse it. All right, let's see what's in the eBay bag. Oh, that doesn't, doesn't want to cut, does it? Yeah. You use a real knife really carefully. There's not a bag inside it. Am I going to dox myself? I hope not. No, I'm not doxing this time. Alright, let's try this bag. Oh, I should learn this lesson from there. Here we go. Right. It's the Fluke Model 510A manual, structure manual. So in the previous mailbag, I actually well a previous mailbag, I don't know, the previous mailbag, one of these arrived in the mail. I actually purchased one of these, found these AC references, or AC standard. Oh, I see this is calibration stuff. Hmm. Nice. Um, now I guess my unit's kind of broke. <laughs> anyway, I didn't have the manual for it. Well, I've got an electronic manual. But I always like to try and get the physical manuals for things. For things I'm going to keep. If it's an item I'm going to keep, I want a physical manual for it. I just like that. It's just nice to actually sit down and read through them that way. Rather than looking at a phone screen or a computer screen or whatever. So this appears to have everything in it. It's got all the boards. It's got really nice detail. Stuff you, detail you don't normally get in like the... Um, electronic manuals if it's a big difference in quality i might actually scan this in and actually because i've got the tools to do the scanning i've got that czur scanner which i sent to review so um this tells you a bit about it all cool so we diagrams there we go nice diagrams so if i needed to i could actually scan this in as a better copy looks like the binding needs to be doing so it's sort of slipped off a little bit but that's not a big deal i can sort that out but, uh, nice. Physical manuals, paper manuals, always the best. Right. For me to get these for a while, actually, I think I did try and buy these sorts of things before, and they never arrived. I think they got lost in the post. 
I don't know, a couple of years ago, I think. This is an iPhone 6S Plus magnetic screw mat. So when you're dismantling one of these phones, you just lay the screws out on the little dots so you know where it all goes. And then these are magnetic, so it means you don't end up losing the screws if you nudge it a little bit. I've got a little magnetic mat up here, which I've been using. But it still has required you to sort of remember where the screws go. Well, one of these means you don't have to worry about that because you just put them on the dots and it'll organize it that way. And this one here is the success which is my other phone. So it's actually for both of my phones. So the 6S Plus and the 6S. So, very nice. You really get some of these for ages. The place I got this from, they sell these for all the different phones. All of, I think, just all the iPhones. I think they've got the whole series. So if you're looking for one of these for a different phone, check the links out down below. Right, now we've got the big box. I'm really wrong shirt. It should be one of my shirts, one of my merch shirts. I've done some new designs recently. I have done, it has to be perfect. That's a nice shirt. It has to be perfect across the shirt. With some nice quirky fonts. And I've also done more digits is better. Uh, uh, and it's got like loads of digits. For vault nuts especially. Maybe check them out. I've got merch links down below somewhere. Did you? Yes. I never heard you. Well, I heard something murmured back. You hear that? I'm in trouble. So after a small intermission for some reason, I'm trying to get back into this so. So there's the back of it. Any ideas yet? You can sell from that? Go on. The vault nuts should know, surely. You know what it is yet? Now I can actually blame this on somebody else, right? This isn't my fault. <laughs> you know who you are, Ian. So another YouTuber pointed out to me that this thing was on eBay. And I've been sort of looking out for things. In fact, there's a bunch of these on eBay. This was the cheapest one. How bad could it be? All right, there we go. It's a Adventist R6581T digital multimeter. Do you know what that means? It's an eight and a half digit multimeter. So the first thing I should do, before I forget and potentially cause a lot of damage, is change the line voltage of this unit. So how do we do this? I'm not familiar with this type. Looks like it pops out. Yes it does. So 100, 200, 220, 120. So we want 220 volt. It's got these jumpers on here. Okay, it slots back in again. So I'll see shorts out the transformer windings. And we'll put that back in. Although it's got fusing in here. There's a fuse there. I don't know how to get to it, but here's a fuse there. Was that just a spring? I don't know. <laughs> There's a fuse in there somewhere. I'll figure it out later. I will have to sort it out. Make sure I change it to the correct rating because currently, because it was set to 100 volts, it's got a probably a 500 milliamp fuse in there. I need to go down to a 250 milliamp fuse as well. So I do have some of those. So I will have to come back and change it later on. But for now, I just want to test it and see if it works. Let's change the camera view a little bit there. I've got things plugged in. Let's power this up and we'll see over here what it's actually drawing. That sort of stuff. Power switches off, we'll start off with that off. So no power switch on, it's doing no power at all. 
Now what you can see over there, but it's dro not drawing anything. Turn the power switch on. Okay, she's dead. That's always interesting. So this unit still has all the seals on it, so I'm comfortable that it's not been stripped or anything like that. It's still sealed. Still got a calibration seal, so I'm comfortable that there's nothing to be messed with inside. That's why I wasn't worried about opening it up and checking it before I powered it. Let me just recheck this. Maybe it's a fusing core. Maybe the fuse is blown or something like that. I don't know. Maybe someone's tried to show it on 220 volts on 100 volt setting. It's possible. Ah, okay, I think I figured it out. I was thinking, no, oh, but the fuse should be in here, but actually, I don't think it is. I think it's just a spring housing. I think this fuse is supposed to be in the front edge. I think it's where it's supposed to be. I think that pushes back. So I think what I need to do is actually put a fuse in here. So there's no fuse in it. Interesting. Why? So I've got a 0 0.1 amp fuse, because I want to start reload, just in case there's a fault and it will blow a bit sooner. Let's shove that in there. And we'll try it again. Switches out, yes. There we go. It's actually working. 0.15 amps is doing. Excellent. So let's put a decent fuse in there. Now we know it's not going to just go bang, and um, we'll look at what's going on. I don't have a 250 milliamp, but I've got 200 milliamp, so that will hopefully do, I've got 0.2, So I'll put this one in, if it blows then I'll end up changing to a 0.5 I think, but uh, I have to see if I can get some more fuses. I don't see any of the right ones. I never do. Alright, let's try this again. I've got it standing up on its feet now. Hmm. We have no display. So it's drawing 30 watts, 1.65 amps because I've increased the voltage to 30 very slightly because that's what I tend to run here anyway. So, we have no display. There's no signs of any physical damage. So I'm hoping that it's either just aged, maybe there's a software thing to turn the display off, I don't know. Um, but no display is certainly concerning because you need a display for it to have it be functional. Hmm. Oh well, this is going to be a future repair video. Actually, I'm going to stand creative in this. Let me turn some lights off. Now you can see it, can't you? The display's very, very dim. Yeah. I think I might need to fix this anyway, but the display is actually working. So actually, I'm going to plug something into this to see if it senses voltage. Well, so I've hooked up the PDV is too many, just here. Let's turn it on. It's going to be cold start, so it's not going to be great you know, for accuracy because it's going to be drifting as it warms up. So I'm outputting zero volts. And you can see it's drifting. A little bit there. So DC volts, auto range. So we should be good there, right? Let's put one volt into it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 100 millivolts. There we go. Let's do that. Well, it's doing something. It's just a shame the display is very really dim. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Hmm. Anyway, 100 millivolts. Yeah. So, what range is this? 110. So, it's a 1200 count or something. I don't know what it will be. 12. <laughs> 1.2 count. I don't know what you want to call it. But it is actually sensing. That's a good thing. But the clicking relays is a symptom of a dead internal battery. <laughs> so 20 millivolts I'm doing there. 20 millivolts is fine. Let's go down to 100 microvolts. Yep. Yeah. Although a bit noisy. Obviously everything's still warming up. This is warming up. The reference here is warming up. 10 microvolts. And you can see that too. So yeah, that's fine. And back then zero. So it's looking a bit better now. So already getting better. Before we're showing 200 and something. As it's all warming up and getting up to temperature, it's getting better and better. And again, 10 microvolts. 10 microvolts. Well, at least it's actually working, apart from the relays. 
Yeah. <laughs> Can I do manual ranging? Hmm. Oh, yes, I can. 10 volt range, here we go. Oh, it's saying overload. Oh, that's interesting. Hundred volt range, there we go. Hundred volt range is reading ten volts. Excellent. So it's actually doing stuff. Even better. But it still needs fixing. Yep, so the bee repair video on this thing. Make sure you subscribe to check it out when I do get to pull this thing apart. It's got a few issues, I think. Just been playing around a little bit. It's definitely got some more faults. So this will be an interesting one.